Hello YouTube, this is Eric, KJ4YZI, amateur radio operator in Florida, and this is a video review on the new 2014 model Bofeng GT3 dual band handheld. Um, I have a few Bofeng or Bofeng, as ever you pronounce it, uh, handhelds like the UV5R, UV5R Plus. This one has supposedly fixed a lot of the problems that the previous models had. Um, a lot of people think it's the same radio with a new face, but they actually did change some hardware components. So I'm going to unbox this, uh, give you a tour of what it looks like and what they changed, and, um, and give you a demo. Now, uh, I received this about a week ago. I purchased it on eBay uh, from a store that I have bought from previously with uh, several other handhelds. And the link is in the description. I got this radio shipped to my house with the Beofeng speaker mic. I didn't have one, so I figured I'd pick up one of these also, okay? Uh, your existing one will work with this radio as well. It's both compatible. I purchased all this for $69, uh, shipped to my house in two days. And I actually have a friend that uh, let me know about this radio, and he is still waiting for his from China. He ordered it about two weeks ago, so... Uh, I'm, I'm happy, satisfied with the buyer that I bought this from, and uh, I'll just give them the credit in the description. But let me go ahead and break this down for you and show you what it's about. Now, when I, when I did receive this, um, I put it right in the charger in the beginning for the first eight hours because that's the most critical on the battery is when you first charge it. I know you're probably eager to use it, but go ahead and put it on the charger for eight hours first, let it charge, and then use it up the first time. After that, you can continue charging it however you need, but the first time is most important. Uh, to start, the instruction manual that comes with it is a lot better than the previous models. Uh, some people said that they couldn't understand the Chinese writing in the previous models instruction books, and uh, this one's actually got color photos, and it's uh, detailed very well compared to the other ones, so this should be able to get you up and running if you've never used one before. If you've had one of these before, the previous models, you'll notice that this instruction book is a lot better written. Uh, so go ahead and read that first before you use anything. Now again, I've already unpacked this, so the plastic is not in here, but uh, it, it comes with it all wrapped up nicely, but I have taken it apart uh, and used it before I did this video. Now here is the body, the actual unit of the GT3. Now, <clears throat> I'll put the intel, I'll show you what it comes with first. This is the GT3. It comes with, of course, the antenna. This is the stock antenna. They do claim that this antenna has been fixed where if you had an older model and you dropped the antenna or the radio, you'll notice that the antenna was making a sound inside like it was uh, loose. They supposedly fixed that with this antenna, okay? Also, it comes with a charger. Now, you may have a charger or two from your previous models. This one looks a little bit different. This one's actually kind of rounded to meet the bottom of the Beofeng. Now, your existing square UV5R, like such, uh, really doesn't like to fit in here. It won't charge well, so I don't recommend using your existing charger uh, for the uh, GT3. However, this plug here, this power adapter, is the same as the ones that you've had before. So this will actually plug into this unit here, or it'll plug into the other chargers that you may have. But this right here is a little bit different, so you might want to put that on your desk right next to the one for your UV5R. It also comes with the hands-free uh, kit with the lapel mic and the speaker to go in your ear. I haven't used this yet, but it comes with one of those for hands-free operation. It also comes with a belt clip, which I haven't put on yet, okay? But it comes with the belt clip. The screws are on the back of the radio, and you take these two screws out, you screw this belt clip on, and you're done, okay? It also comes with the wrist strap here 
that I, I usually always put on my radios here so that you don't drop it when you're using it. Very good to have. So I'll start with the radio here. Now this is what it looks like compared to the UV5R. Now the buttons are in the same place. The, I, the, the appearance is similar, although you can see the GT3 has the orange uh, ruggedized look to it. Uh, it's kind of like a plastic rubberized handle on the side here. And, uh, you know, it, it's just as light as the UV5R. It does fit very nicely in your hand. I like the way it feels in my hand. It's kind of got a round contour to it when you hold it. Um, but, like I said, the buttons are in the same spot, so it's not a whole new radio to learn. It's going to operate the same fashion as your old one. Uh, they both have the LED light. That one's got a light here. Let me turn this radio on. Okay, and this one has a light. Okay, very bright. The only difference is this one will blink too. So that's good if you're lost or for emergency communications. You can actually put it on steady or you can put it on blink. Okay. Um, you notice the lighted keypad down here. It's an orange lighted keypad. Kind of goes good with the look of the radio. This one had a lighted keypad also, uh, but you can see that the GT3 has a, a, it's illuminated quite nicely, so it's easier to see in the dark. Um, I've used this in the dark already. It's, it's very, very easy to use, uh, given that you're in a safe environment to look down at your radio. Uh, so now I'll show you a couple of things here. Uh, you've probably seen in the beginning of the video, in the intro, I did put that uh, picture there that I received off of uh, the internet. And they did actually put a new radio frequency IC, they put a new frequ frequency modulated receiver chip, and they used a new power amplifier IC. So with the new hardware on there, it is actually new uh, internals in the radio. Uh, the, the new chips provide a more stable output, a cleaner output, uh, a cleaner audio out of the front speaker, which you can notice the front speaker here is more exposed, so it does get quite loud. I have to say, if you're in a noisy truck, you will hear this radio. Um, and it also fixed the receiver sensitivity, where this old UV5R, sometimes if you were close to a station, it would still break up like you were far away. And uh, I was always wondering if it was my antenna or what, but it was actually the sensitivity in this radio. The squelch on the old UV5R, even if you put it from number one to number 10, it would still go off uh, in your pocket or in the truck the squelch would go off uh, if, even if you weren't near anything. They fixed that in this model in the areas that this used to go off in. When I drive in those areas with this new uh, radio, it doesn't do that anymore. Uh, so they, with the new chip inside, it did fix the squelch problem. The higher you set the number of the squelch, the stronger it is, uh, the higher the threshold for the squelch. So that, that is an improvement. As well as the uh, Vox, with this UV5R, the Vox would... Uh, it, if you put it on number one or number ten, it didn't matter which number you put it on, the sensitivity of the Vox was the same. So if you were in a loud truck, it would constantly go off, and it would key the radio and, and keep it in transmit for about ten seconds. This new radio has not done that, so uh, the Vox has been fixed also on this new GT3. To demonstrate the uh, what I found, which is very interesting, is on the FM radio portion, the band on the UV5R is usually 88 to 108 megahertz. On the new radio, it's 65 to 115. Now, I guess that's because in different parts of the world, they may have different band allocations for FM broadcast, but uh, this one goes from 65 to 115. And then in the 2-meter band, it goes 136 to 174 megahertz. And in the UHF portion, it's 400 to 512. This one only would go 88 to 108 in the FM broadcast, 136 to 174 in the, in the VHF amateur band, and 400 to 480 in the UHF. So you get a little more frequency coverage with the GT3 as opposed to the uh, UV5R. Now, I'm going to set these on uh, FM radio. I have a station I like to listen to, but it never comes in on this radio at my house. Uh, let me see. Let me set it to... Okay, so 88.9 is what I have this set at, okay? There's the 88.9 on the UV5R, and 88.9, if you can see that, as soon as the backlight turns, there it is, 88.9 on the GT3. Now, when I turn up 88.9 on the UV5R, I hear static. 
doesn't even pull in the station. When I turn it up on the GT3, okay, crystal clear. So that's actually a vast improvement because I like listening to this radio station in my house. Doesn't come in on my UV5R at all. Same kind of antennas, same exact area in the house. But it actually works on the GT3. Uh, so the receiver, and, and while, I'm, while I'm working, the areas that I would have poor reception on this UV5R has been improved on the GT3. So it is a vast improvement with the new hardware. It isn't an old radio on a new face. They actually did make some changes. I'm curious to see if they'll make additional models with the GT3. Uh, but it, it will uh, it will do for now. This is a very very nice radio. On the one side, you'll have your same buttons. You have the call button on top, which also is to turn on your FM radio. Your PTT button for transmit, and your monitor button, which also turns on your light. Okay, uh, those are the same. On the other side, you have your speaker mic connectors here. They both have the rubber. Uh, dust cover on there, okay, like this one here. This one seems, over here on the GT3, this one seems to be a little more snug and, and uh, tight fitting, so that's that's for keeping good, that's good for keeping dust out. Bayofeng does claim this radio is water, water resistant and dust resistant. It doesn't mean it's submersible. It doesn't mean that you can drop it in the water, but in uh, Ideal conditions where you may be outside and it may be raining or humid or wet, uh, this is supposed to be more resistant to those weather conditions than the, G, than the UV5R. Uh, you'll notice the display also. My camera lighting may not be the best, but the old UV5R display was the classic looking like a calculator screen with the black letters. Now, in certain sunlight conditions, this would be hard to read. The GT3 has a black background with the white uh, segment letters. Now, the GT3 doesn't have the purple, orange, and blue colors on the screen that the UV5R has, but it has one color for the backlight, one color for the backlight that does, and my camera won't really see it, but it does make it good in outdoor conditions to see the screen. Another feature I've noticed is that with the UV5R, when I transmit for two or three minutes at, a, at one time, this radio would heat up really good, and it would it would make the screen turn black like you left it in the sunlight. It would discolor the screen uh, with the heat dissipation from you transmitting. This GT3 has not done that yet. I've, I've purposely keyed down and talked for five minutes at a time, and it did not make the screen turn color. So I'm pretty sure they, they did an improvement uh, with the heat dissipation in the radio. Um, that way it doesn't make the screen change color where you can't see it. But other than that, the buttons are in the same spot, so you're not going to have to relearn all the buttons. It will operate in the same way. When you turn it on, you do get the frequency mode. You do get the voice that you can turn on or off. Okay, this UV5R actually had the the Chinese woman's voice. Frequency mode. Okay, this one has a uh, an frequency mode. So a different voice. You can turn the voice off. I choose I choose to leave it on. Uh, other than that though, this, this is a great improvement. Um, I've used it for a week and a half I guess and maybe a week, week and a half it's done good. Um, I got this for a little bit more than what I paid for the Beofeng UV5R. This was $69.99 with everything. That was with the speaker mic also. So without the speaker mic it's less. Uh, but a great radio, a great improvement, Beofeng. Uh, I hope to see that they do come out with the extended battery for this unit because they have the extended battery for the UV5R, which sticks out a lot further, and it gets you days without a charge. This is supposed to be a 7 to 9 hour life battery. That's uh, 7 to 9 hours continuous use lithium ion battery. And uh, so far, uh, it's lasted a couple days in between as I use it all day, so it does have a good lifespan on it. And the batteries and stuff are relatively cheap on online to get replacement batteries. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens. Maybe the GT3 comes out with a new model that'll uh, be upgraded from it. Uh, that would be a good thing. Other than that, this is a great radio. So uh, thanks for watching my video. I hope it was informative for you. I hope you enjoyed it. You can leave a comment in the bottom if you'd like and let me know uh, how you liked the video and how you like your radio if you bought one yourself. 
This is Eric, KJ4YZI, and we are QRT73.